very good against them, sure. But, yeah, definitely something was off. You could feel that. So, but, hey, like we're seeing here, they're up one nothing over uh, over Rexar. So that's big for them. And I'm just fixing a couple overlays right here real quickly before get going with this one. But, uh, yeah, it's, we're in the draft, though, as you see here. And, actually, uh, look at that. Gemini picked up once again by Nullstone Gaming. You know, we, we saw they had it last game and obviously led them to victory, I'm sure. Um, but he also has a lot of good history with that hero, Beaver Banger. Oh, yes. I'm sure Quincy has that on board uh, here to show us, but it's pretty impressive stat line, so he knows what he's doing with the hero. Definitely, definitely. Um, and already you can sort of see the sort of strategy coming from either team sort of slowly um, sort of seeping in. Maybe the more sort of team fight potential here for Rexars versus a, a bit more your late game and, and Genki potential with the Parasite and Gemini and Swift already picked up. Um, obviously, I think the Parasite will have to really focus on, on ganking already, although the draft hasn't finished. But uh, it looks like you know the, their laning phase, or even the, you know the early game, is, is definitely impeded with the the, the, two, the two sort of carries already picked up. They're most likely going to have to maybe finish this with a um, a, a mid, or like a an initiator as well as a, a support. So uh, probably not the strongest of um, strongest of, of laning. So you know, Parasite has to really do work to, to really help them get out of the laning phase, you know, without too much of a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Well, I see a lot, a lot of plus win percentages here amongst all these heroes being picked up now. But um, <laughs> Tilifant, so look at that, seventy-one percent win on Catilifant. <laughs> well, there's a reason he's banned quite often. Again, yes, that's only in seven games, but because Still. he's banned all the other games, so that's why he's not seen. Yeah, this is a that's a hero that uh, well, we are going to see here, obviously. So get more information. Like, like I was talking about, I mean, I, I wasn't aboard that hype train. Now this this was me speaking from zero playing experience or playing sure. against him. So. Basically, it meant nothing, but I don't know. Just something about it was like, <laughs> hey, okay, I get it, guy. You, because we've had history of certain heroes like that, where it's like everyone gets on the hype train, and then, you know, we, we see him starting to be picked up. It's like, oh, wait, well, no, he really wasn't that strong. So, But uh, I have got the chance to play against him now a couple times. We have seen him a couple times. He's pretty ridiculous as far as what he can do. So I think, again, it just goes back to his, his, uh, his aura. His aura is just so annoying to deal against. It's just it's just another thing you have to think about while you're in those team fights or ganks or whatever, because uh, before you know it, all of a sudden you're attacking your teammate and not chasing or running away or whatever. So yeah. it's like an AOE puppet show as well. So like imagine that, and and you can just see the the potential and the power of it. Blitz, okay. Um, a hero that honestly doesn't get played enough in my opinion. I think the hero is very very strong. Um, but you do have to kind of find the, sort of the niche game for it to be really useful. Um, but I think this game could definitely have the potential, uh, obviously given the, the, the increased movement speed to, to Swiftblade and, and, and overall to, to Parasite as well. You can actually sure. give Quicken to Parasites in Festive Creep. So he's been running at like Mach 5 uh, on <laughs> in that creep. And, and actually finished off with a silhouette as well. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, this game looking like it's going to go long, man, just like Game 1 as well. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that again. We didn't watch the Game 1, but from the monitoring we did a couple of times there poking in and... Not the most action-packed game, apparently, so I'd you know, like to, to hope that uh, maybe step up this game, but uh, obviously, again, there is a bit on the line here. In this case, same as the other series we are just covering. You lose here, you're, you're getting bumped down to uh, to the gold division, and again, for, for these two teams, I, that, that's what, that's how it, you know, as great as this eight-team format is here in the Diamond Division, I'm a huge fan, and I think it's safe to say, you know, it's, it's a great thing overall, but uh, the, the one negative is that you, you, you get teams like, like these guys right here, you know, both of them pretty deserving to be in the Diamond Division, obviously. Obviously, oh, but yeah. in the end, one of them is going to be bounced down to the gold. So, yeah. we'll go see big, go one. home, man. Yeah, you know, you know what's kind of funny about this though, too, is it's kind of hitting me. But cycle one, the last of us actually met up against Rexars in the losers bracket round one as well. Again, that that match though, last of us ended up having to forfeit because they weren't able to get a five player yeah. roster <laughs> somehow. Um, so again, this isn't technically the last of us, but it basically is. I mean, several of their players are the same. So, I yeah. mean, like. Until they until they change their tag to like Nullstone Gaming or like NSG, like I'm sure <laughs> them Last of Us, because like That's fair. I mean, you got to tag up if you're in Diamond. Just just saying. Like, That's fair. Just tag I like that. It's not hard. Just do it. Like. <laughs> it really isn't hard. And yeah, somehow make it seem that way. Uh, yeah. So you see uh, the players and, and hero percentages and everything and how they fare with them. But uh, of course, uh, now reasons why these teams are here pulling up the brackets once again. Rexar is getting knocked out by Willow Keeper. And Millstone Gaming, as we talked about, getting knocked out by BMG uh, in their first round matchup. So, thus why we are here. And to see what happens now again. Millstone Gaming up one game to nothing, as you see on the screen there. 
So we're jumping into this series now as the Moe's Tavern or Wop Wop uh, defeat. A lot of these names, man, it's just like, what 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 is their actual <laughs> name? <laughs> Why don't they just pick a name and then just stick just with stick it? It with makes it. our job so much easier. It really does. It really does. So anyways, those guys defeated Don. Obviously two games to nothing, so... And that, uh, but you know, that's something to look forward to. Obviously, after this series even wraps up right here, then we got our next uh, next series of matches going to be coming up. Of course, the winner of this actually plays Reason Gaming, and then again, the winner of uh, the other series, so Wop Dash, will play Bad Monkey Gaming over there. So some fun uh, continuations there, as far as the series go here. Uh, all right, so there you go. Yeah, he's. Uh, oh, he that that was last game. Oh, okay. So what is the what is the overall in Gemini? Do we have that style? I'm a chance. I don't know if you posted that or not, or or yet already. I didn't see it pop up there. But uh, yeah, so last game apparently he went. Wait, that was last game? No, no that sixteen. Th yeah, that sure. could not have been last game with all those hero kills. Uh, I had so little kills. <laughs> There's no way it picked up that much <laughs> at the end. Oh, I see. Uh, overall. Beaver. Oh. I'm trying to see if that tournament matches recorded here. No, that's from last weekend. Uh, that's overall swiftly. So Oh, oh wait, really? Time. I could have sworn Beaver Banger. I don't know. Was the I name thought Beaver Banger was the. I, thought I Beaver recall, was the yeah. I mean, huh. they have so many people on this on this roster. Though, <laughs> That's <so> true. <laughs> it feels like it's a new team every single time they play, so it doesn't really That's matter, true. I guess. But, Very but anyway, good the game point. is underway though, and look, it's looking like Parasite's actually going to go aggressive. Um, something I do like to see whenever we see a, a Parasite going against you know jungle versus jungle strategy, I do like to, to see him get aggressive because I mean you you should really utilize the Infest, and, and he's probably one of the best uh, aggressive junglers, and and you can really impede uh, the Tempest's farm. And why not? You can obviously put you know uh, more pressure onto the top lane and, and the middle lane coming from the enemy jungle than than from your own jungle because obviously you can come up behind them uh, it, from either the top lane or the bottom or the middle lane. Sorry, once you're in the enemy jungle. So, and it's looking like it's going to be a kind of aggressive uh, pseudo tri lane up here actually. So silhouette might actually have a, a bad time and it's probably a good strategy in that sense because now they can obviously shut down one of the carries whilst also shutting down their jungler uh, while giving you know farm on the on the Gemini. So uh, already like in the lanes. Pull out here by uh, the Last of Us. You mean No Stone Gaming? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. I mean. We're, no, we're, we're, we're gonna stop that. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> you call them. You call them what you want. I, I, we know. Okay. We know what we're talking about. That was. I, I just had the to. The Legion team. I, I just. I just had to do that. <laughs> Uh, no, but yeah, it's going to be, uh, so the decision making definitely on the ball here. Trent's uh, the captain of the team, you know, whether he's making those decisions, those actual calls or not, but uh, definitely props for that. So it's going to be interesting to see how Rexar's really responds to this, because as far as their their possible decisions here, you know, uh, I mean, they're probably, they, they probably are landing it the best that they could for what they're going up against, I think you could say, but does that mean that this will work out for them is the question, obviously, so... Yeah, and actually, like what they did there is, you saw actually they were, they were they were waiting for the creeps to even go in there, and it, it you know it gives them enough time to actually, or it gives uh, Rex has no time to actually think about you know how they're going to lane obviously. So uh, a good already uh, good play coming out from Nullstone Gaming. We are going to see actually the Empath silhouette up here against the Tempest. So in this is it's going to be like a try versus try obviously just uh, with with a jungler in the mix. So it's going to actually depend on who plays it better because I think actually it's quite even in terms of the landing phase. So. Keep an eye on the top lane, but in the other lanes we've got Pharaoh versus Kefilifin actually in the middle lane. So that's quite rare. We don't huh. really normally see Kefilifin in the middle lane. Yeah. And actually, it's been a lot of har uh, harassment actually onto the Pharaoh in the middle lane. But uh, and then obviously down bottom we see the the wretched hag versus the the swift blade. Uh, and in that case, I think actually both lanes should be won by Rexars in that sense, because I think Kefilifin is a very very strong lane against a melee. Yeah. And obviously Rex Hag versus a melee, uh, a very very strong lane in that sense. So, uh, you know, Nullstone Gaming have to do very very well here in the top lane to you know to sort of uh, balance out the, the lost lanes of middle and bottom. Well, I think the most interesting thing about the middle Kefilifin is it's it's kind of like it takes away a little bit from maybe his best potential in the sense that he can't really just go to the jungle and you know grab a creep with that hook yep. ability. Like he could if he's in one of the side lanes. So I think obviously that that's kind of the drawback here. But in the end, yeah, as you're talking about, especially in a melee versus melee matchup, it seems like his skill set uh, speaks for being a very powerful hero and expecting to have a good time. So it's what getting is boxed this? out by. Oh him. yeah. And Flippin's coming over. He might be in trouble actually. There's a trample. It connects right there, right as he comes out of the creep. The stun to follow. He's gonna hear a block oh, that fast. Oh, the block getting in the way. The wall comes out as well, and Parasite oh, does go down. As Serenia picks up credit for the kill right there on Tempest. So, well, you, you talked about how you liked what uh, what they were yeah, doing. Unfortunately, it doesn't I mean, work. It, 
This just goes back to honestly, good play coming out from Empath and Tempest, and a little bit bad play coming out from the Parasite. I think his pathing should have definitely been down instead of through the middle lane because, like, if he runs here into uh, you know into the side lane instead of going through into the middle lane, he's going to have like an easier time. And obviously, he got caught out by the equivalent there. But at the same time, like Blitz needs to focus on on really winning the jungle for his Parasite. He's focusing too much of his time actually in the in, the, in their own lane. Uh, trying to harass the silhouette, but he really needs to give you know, Parasite the best time because now Parasite's going to go into his own jungle and now it's actually going to be a dual lane versus a tri lane here in the top lane. So now this top lane is actually going to be slowly lost here by the Nullstone Gaming. So already a little bit, a little bit of a bad play and obviously a good play coming out from Rexas and now they're going to hopefully start getting control of this top lane and uh, you know start winning this top lane. Yeah. Well, you see uh, the lane's getting pushed up in the Legion's team favor for the time being. So Gemini. His farm, you know, 12-5. and Credit that silhouette is looking only at 6-0 and currently. Uh, we'll see if that uh, does pick up in D4, the Hellborn team or not. But bottom line in the meantime, Swift Blade 16-2. And, and you have Wretched Ag at 9-2, actually. She is going to get a creep wave wow. pushed in her right here. But, yeah, Swift Blade actually managing a much wow. better time here. Yeah, I mean, Swift Blade is a, is a great laner, but I would expect, you know, Hag to have, you know, the better time, or at least a better time than he's having right now, but... Yeah, I mean, Fuzzy Sloth clearly showing he's very, very strong in the voting phase, actually. Yeah. Well played indeed, coming out uh, from, the, from the Fuzzy Sloth here. Tagged up on the 007, the classic We Are Spies team, of course. So just one of the other names on the list of the many team names that they've had. Uh, middle lane, Cthulhuan really just <laughs> basically at the time. Okay, so, so that's pretty ridiculous. The fact that he could dish damage, dish out damage with the hook him and not draw aggro like that is pretty fun, too. That's, so he's kind of abusing that right there. Basically standing in tower range, so well played. Uh, the Swift Blade Hag matchup goes in favor of Swift Blade typically. Okay, wow. Uh, as far as the overall, you know, win percentage, you know, Swift Blade yeah, as a hero yeah. is, of course, much stronger in the game. I, I, don't, I, was, I don't know if Swift Blade was pulled region, but that could obviously be a, be a big reason why he start, he's, he's winning this lane. But yeah. um, I guess we'll have to. I mean, he's, he's, Hag is only down by you know a couple of creep kills in the end, but um, but yeah, definitely still won by Swift Blade in this sense. Yeah. Uh, but look at the top lane. I mean, Blitz has already had to rotate down because obviously it's a dual lane versus a tri, uh, tri lane here. So already you can see that the control is being slowly lost here by by uh, Nullstone Gaming here in the top lane. Uh, and I mean, and Ge Gemini ha uh, having uh, to suicide isn't obviously the, the strongest of lanes you'd, you'd expect. Uh, but Blitz is rotating here in the bottom lane. Might try and set up a gank on, on the Hag, but ward, Hag though. should be fine. Got yeah. this ward, yeah, exactly. Plenty of information and easily going to be fine as a result. So. Not the biggest deal there. Yeah, Blitz is definitely a good counterpart to uh, Swift Blade as well, as far as, you know, has both a stun and a slow. A pretty powerful slow that he can apply. <laughs> so, you know, kind of that Glacius impact in, in a sense, as far as a teammate for uh, for Swift Blade. So definitely has a lot of kill potential, but again, the ward is sight, beautifully placed, has given him plenty of information to work with here. And it'd be more than fine. So I'm actually very curious though, to see where this Cthulhu font kind of goes from here. Again, he's level 6 now. Uh, it's not like he's not like other heroes where oh he's level six he needs to gank but yeah. uh, you know I don't expect him to static farm the middle lane either. He does have a haste run though. I'd like to actually see him pick up a TP and then maybe try and gank the, the bottom lane or even the top lane perhaps. He's got the haste run and obviously that's a, like almost a free kill on any lane he decides. I'd like to see him really use it though instead of just waste it and farm the middle lane. Uh, however, he is rotating. Actually, pop, pop the haste. Maybe he's gonna run top. Yeah. This could definitely be a kill on Gemini if he's not careful. Well, Gemini's already getting jumped. The death bonus is actually missed right there from Silhouette. You look at the return damage from the level 3 Twin Fangs, and uh, it's going to be enough to kind of scare him off for Twin Breath even. As, yeah, the haste of Cthulhu Fawn, he runs over, but he was spotted by the Warded Side anyway, so not able to get there in time. But good attempt. However, Pharaoh was able to pick up some decent farm in the meantime. While Cthulhu Fawn was MIA. In fact, Pharaoh has a higher Creep farm than Cthulhu Fawn for the time being, and that quickly... Kind of closes the gap right there with a couple of kills, but still. Pharaoh is actually managing overall pretty good. So, you know, we are talking about the matchup in itself, and oh, we probably lean towards Cthulhu Fomp, but it's speaking to be pretty even as far as they're, they're playing out right now. So that's uh, good news for the Legion yeah. team, I would guess. Yeah, definitely. I think it just goes back to, obviously, Pharaoh can get a lot of creep kills with his Tormented Soul, but I think the harassment on Cthulhu Oh, my God. Is Gemini might get a kill on a Tempest? No, it's not enough damage, and actually... He's going to have to fall back, which he will be fine with. He actually went a bottle here, too, in the long lane. Uh, he's going to use a bottle charge and heal up just fine. But, yeah, he nearly caught the kill on a Tempest. I was yeah, able to get away in time. Middle lane in the meantime, no, that's just oh, an illusion. illusion. <laughs> man, those illusions, man. <laughs> you know. see it on the middle map, and there's like so many like next to him. Like, oh, there's action, but there's not in the end. Yeah. Yeah, fair, not a typical mid-hero, but as you see right there, maybe not usually the best result.
in the end. But, I mean, at the same time, you know, it's just gonna talk, we're talking about Cthulhu Fauna, you know, level 6, you know, not like, oh, he needs to gank now. Well, Pharaoh is kind of that hero, though. You get level 6 yeah, rather than true. Pharaoh. Yeah. So, from their perspective, you maybe like uh, to see should, him jumping around. Yeah, he should gank bottom, actually. He could definitely do it. If they set up a gank where, actually, middle lane, though, yeah, you do see middle lane. Here we go. Speaking of ganks, Parasite comes in. Cthulhu Fine. He's in a lot of trouble again. He's so tanky. Oh, I thought it was going to be fine, but no, he was not. The twin breath of the last second as he was in trample animation gets the kill. So they hook him, mitigating quite a bit, but obviously not enough. And finally a kill coming out right there for our Legion team. So well played. And yeah, the uh, Suicide Gemini assisting there in the middle lane. So that's a... Hefty target to kill, but uh, that, that goes back to the movement that was the Wrath of the Feral used. No, it wasn't. He uh, still has and it. And this is why this is why I'd actually like to see him rotate bottom and get this kill on Hag, because all they need to do is have... I mean, if the lane gets pushed out, Hag you know, will move you know, near, or, you know, past the river, per se. Blitz will come in with a stun, then Hag will blink away, and that's when you know, we need the Wrath of the Feral to sort of catch Hag after he's blinked. Because if he, if he you know, uses the Wrath of the Pharaoh, you know, well, once Hag has still got the blink, then it's not going to be a kill. They need to bait out the blink coming out from Hag and then use it. And this is where they obviously need the, the, the rotation from Blitz as well. But uh, it doesn't look like he's going to go for a gank just yet. But um, I would like to see him use it, though, because you don't pick up the Pharaoh just a farm. Although he has got good farm in the middle lane, like he's losing. Well, technically, he was losing. Edge top lane. Yeah, Gemini's putting out some good damage. But the Tempest, although they're going to hold him in place. Now this should be a return kill. And an easy return kill at that. You could tell what Gemini was going for. Because they're going to initiate split up and go for the kill. But actually, meanwhile, in the middle lane, Cthulhu Fuck goes down. So some revenge coming out right away for the Legion team right here. But this is going to be a top tower push now. And I don't think they're going to be able to defend it. I'm looking at TPs. They got one of Pharaoh, but he is the only one. And he ain't stopping this himself. So this will be the tower kill. So the big picture, I think it's safe to say, Rexar is coming out on top after all that uh, in the end. But... Uh, at least, at least no Stone yeah. Gaming got a kill in middle lane. It depends if they can take this tier 1 mid though for Legion. If they can take that, it will be probably a quite good trade for The Last of Us. But, um, I mean, and also I don't think, you know, Rexos are going to be able to take this tier 2 top. Although, Gemini is rotating over, but he's the flank coming up from Empath. <laughs> I don't know if they can catch him again. Yeah, Empath got a decent angle right here, but no, he actually just places a ward of sight. It's a really good water place, actually. Yeah. Because if he puts it above the hill over here on the little statue guy, like, that's going to get counted immediately. But this one is obviously gives good vision. And it's not going to get counted coming out by, um, so yeah, I think, Red Rexer. Uh, I can't pronounce that name, so <laughs> it's, it's Red Rexer. Yeah, Serenia. Yeah, I think, yeah. That guy. Yeah. So, that yeah. guy, yeah. Well played, well played. <laughs> uh, you see Silhouette kind of still pushing up a little bit. Got the Ghost Marchers. Has a life two picked up here. So, you know, your typical Nullstone into uh, a portal key, I'm sure we're going to see here on Big Arlong playing the uh, playing the silhouette. In the meantime, though, Swift played. He's doing his own thing. Bottom lane has his own Ghost Marchers, farming 317 gold per minute right here. This is actually up there on the charts. As, yeah, the Wild Hunter coming in. But Parasite uh, not able to get a range of Wretched Hacks. He's playing a little too passive. He should wait it down in though. If if Pharaoh comes if Pharaoh comes over, that's a guaranteed kill though, because they can kill her in the the two second silence come out from face hug. But Pharaoh goes back to the middle lane, and and uh, Wild Hunter goes back to farming. But he's still actually in it, and obviously due to the buff to Infest, now he can stay in this Wild Hunter as long as he wants. Um, so maybe he's just looking for a gank, but it depends. I mean, he's wasting quite a lot of time, and and this Hag is just AFK and by the tower, which is probably the right decision to make. But um, actually, is he going to jump on this silhouette yeah. illusion here? <laughs> Don't do it. Okay, he hits it. Uh, where, okay, yeah, right there, yeah. So, nope. Yeah, that that those are always awkward moments, and you know, okay, so that's just one of those. You know, we, wait, that wasn't the ultimate, though. Okay, I was gonna say. So he has his ultimate this early on, but never mind. <laughs> that was actually just a straight up illusion rune that he uh, happened to get. So he still doesn't have his ultimate, and we we talked about that. I think it was yep. yesterday even. Uh, I forget exactly the 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 player that we're kind of going over with it about. But anyways, the fact that he didn't get the ultimate and, you know, it kind of cost him a couple times because, you know, that's a strength, yeah. a big strength of this hero, the fact that he can easily push it a little freely, so. Kinda yeah, it was Balthazar on, right. on tree. But yeah, no, I agree. And, and, and I don't understand, like, I, I, they picked up the, the Relentless Salva, obviously, because of the, the laning presence against Gemini, but... And just having that one point in, in the shadow is really, really important. I mean, I guess I can understand because obviously you, you won't have a lot of mana and, and obviously having the ultimate is, is quite a lot of mana, 150, and he's only got obviously got 500 max. But at the same time, it just offers so much more play and a lot more versatility with the hero uh, if you pick up early enough. But yeah. the sides are going to see it, and maybe we're going to see it you know, in the next couple of levels, but um, who knows. 
You would hope so. You would hope so. It's not one of those you just pass up and you're like, I'm gonna go stats over this. No, that would, that would be stupid. <laughs> uh, it's a no. hammer storm. He'll get it eventually. <laughs> yeah, right. He'll get it eventually, so it's just a matter of time here. Uh, other farm elsewhere, I mean, she's obviously leading the way, because the bot's about 300 gold per minute. So even though he's been taken out a couple times here, he's actually managed to still farm pretty well overall. He's level 9 here. Not a whole lot of movement, though. And again, we were, we mentioned last game, we are kind of monitoring it a little bit. A very slow-paced game, and we're kind of getting that here. It's only 2-2 two yeah. two hero kills. But, I mean, even with heroes like Parasite Pharaoh, you got the Cthulhu yeah. farm. You know, farming up early on with middle. You would think maybe a more aggressive play would Definitely. be coming out, but I mean, but, I mean, for, for help on the, all that they can just play reactive daughter, or reactive Hans, sorry. <laughs> uh, they can play it reactive like they they don't need to really get on the aggressive or the aggression because they don't really have the great the greatest ganking potential. They've got great team fight. They've got great late game. Whereas for Legion, they've got the parasite. They've got the Pharaoh. They need to to really get involved in and make these hero kills happen because once it gets into the middle late game, these heroes of parasite and Pharaoh are really going to fall off. So I mean, you pick up these heroes to get you the advantage in the early game, but they obviously need to you know make utilization of their heroes and uh, for them to really really worthwhile in the draft. But um, and in the meantime, they are just going to. Uh, AFK and farm in the jungle. I mean, they do have great farm, to be fair. I mean, 280 GPM on, on Parasite and 320 on, on Pharaoh, but I mean, it could be even better and obviously reduce the farm of the enemy team if they get involved in ganks, but at the same time, it is risky. They all have TPs here on the Hellborn, so they're expecting the, the gank potential of, of, uh, of the last of us, so um, it's just one of those things, I guess, that we're going to see maybe just one gank and then we'll just see a massive team fight. Actually, top lane, this could yeah. be the, the big team fight. As we're saying that, I mean, here we go. A Gemini no, it's just. They have no gate. Yeah, they have no gate potential. It's like, like ah, I'm coming gank. in. All right, yeah, I'm gonna run. <laughs> Ooh, it's scary. No, but yeah, the, the only gate potential they really have is the is the Kefilifin with the portal key. Um, here for Hellborn, and obviously Kefilifin wasn't there, so it's gonna depend. Will Will Rexars want to start team fighting? If that's the case, then obviously we will start seeing some hero kills on the board. But if not, then it's really the Legion, uh, really Legion side to really get aggressive and, and start the the action and the kills going but in the meantime it's, it's really really rare though for, for all tier one towers to be up um, as you can see the top tower in the, like 15 minutes it's very very rare um, and we're just sort of seeing oh. lanes just being pushed that's what we see right here level 11 swift blade i mean he is just farm 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 and he's got the fire brand on top of the ghost monster so he's squishy but when there's not a whole lot of action going on that's not a big deal he's Fun. giving out some yeah. good damage he's farming it up pretty pretty nicely i mean usually would have seen the abyssal skull maybe an energizer even picked up before that firebrand, but exactly with the There's way no this need. game is playing, yeah, yeah why, <laughs> why waste I mean, what, uh, your gold on those items? One thing to note though is obviously he couldn't predict the the action and the, the, the tempo of this game. True. But if he actually picked up a, a, a ruined cleaver, that would have been perfect. I yeah. think in this this situation, oh, he would yeah. have been a lot more farmed. Like he would have been at like 450 GPM by now, most likely, instead of the 370. I um, mean, action is slowly starting to happen though. The rotation come out from Rex, so they do push the tier one, and looks <laughs> like they might even start pushing the, the you, tier one bottom as well. You know what he should have gone. Thunderclaw. I'm no, sorry. I, I, I don't know. We, why have we not still seen this freaking item, man? The, the, speaking of uh, hype no, about stuff going into, uh, that item was hyped up like, oh my god, Thunderclaw farm is going to be crazy. It's going to be, you know, OP. crazy, crazy farm. <laughs> and, pick out, yeah. and we have yet to see an actual Thunderclaw pickup that's <laughs> mattered. There was a one game, the Puppet Master, who was crazy did, far oh, behind. He did. He did do quite well on that, I think, though. With, when he yeah, but it wasn't even like a priority item. It was like later on, like yeah. I gotta recover I somehow, so I'm gonna pick yeah. up Thunderclaw. Well, bottom lane. Yeah, bottom lane. We do see actually ports coming in right here. Cthulhu the though, portal keys away. Here comes Swift Blade. He's got a level two Swift Slash. There's a lot of damage. Impact jumps inside the last second though. She mitigates a lot of damage as a result of that and stays alive. Tempest does get caught out though with the Wrath of the Pharaoh, but the rest will survive. So, well, there you go. At least a little bit of movement coming out finally. Uh, does yeah, result in one kill. And I don't know if Rexos really needs to make this action and movement happen because, like, they don't have the strongest of team fight. We saw obviously in the last series they had you know crazy good AOE synergy and, and the team fight potential was definitely there. But for for this team, they've they've got you know late games of, of Silhouette and Wretched Hag, and, and they're not the strongest just of yet. Um, so why was there? There doesn't need to be this this force of, of a rotation. They took the tier one mid. Okay, that was good and all, but I mean pushing for a tier one bottom as well. You, you, and you saw what happened. They don't really have the, the greatest of farming. Uh, for help on, and maybe they just got a little bit too antsy, and they wanted to make action happen. But um, you know, Last of Us just easily just um, responded and, and took you know 
the one team fight. They only didn't get the, the kill onto Tempest, but that was enough to increase their experience lead by you know 6.5k. So um, maybe they're going to sort of learn from that and just maybe sit back and, and farm a little bit more before they take the next team fight. Yeah, that's uh, very possible. I mean, Blitz right here. I kind of forgot he was almost in this game to be frank, because usually you hear like Blitz would, would advocate a little more action as well. Going back to that, but. No, he's going to be fine. He has the boots on him, and he pops the quick in. Going to be able to run away with uh, with ease right there. Parasite has a puzzle box pickup. It takes over a Wild Hunter. But you see the mini-map. There's probably no ganks to be had because everyone on the Hellborn team, they're going to the top lane area. But speaking of ganks, though, they might look to collapse. Never mind. <laughs> How about that greedy? Again, this really shows you. He goes actually a searing light on Swift Blade before even... The frost. Usually, you see the frost bring. You know, I want to take up a little bit. This is actually the better item pickup, I think, because um, obviously he's not. He's not. You know, not really getting involved in team fights. And obviously, the uh, the uh, the searing light is a lot better in terms of farm as well as damage as well. So, um, I do actually like this pickup. Actually, it's a lot better than just going the ice brand in this case, because he's obviously going to turn it into a Dawnbringer. Um, yeah. But this is definitely the, the right or the better way to to build it uh, in the first components, anyway. Well, I, th that's kind of interesting because actually, w when Searing Light first the came to Washington, Dominic was starting to become more and more of an item that we saw. We, I, 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 from what I recall, I think Searing Light was Ooh, actually the more popular. Oh, finally, top lane initiation coming out right here. Fair with the response. The Twin Fangs going to be used by Gemini initially to get away. He will be fine. Reggie goes down. Here comes Swift Flight spinning in the background. He has to slash. still remember. And no one on silhouette. She points out with the illusion, but Cthulhu Vault cannot do the same. The Swift Slash is not going to be used just yet because it's out of range. Parasite Chaser, though, he takes over the Mauler. He's going to try to chase down the silhouette. But no, Silhouette just a little too fast, perhaps. Oh, unless it gets cut off, though. He has a Null Stone, though, so even if he sees him, yeah, he wouldn't be able to Swift Slash right there. So good getaway coming out. Takes Empath yeah. with him. I mean, what? I don't, Rex has clearly didn't you know, learn from the mistake because, again, like, they grouped up for the, for the Tier 2 top. They don't really have the greatest of items in terms of pushing or really you know, team fighting just of yet. And again, you see The Last of Us really, they rotated in, uh, they took the team fight, and as a result, they won the team fight there and then. And look at the experience gold lead, it's even further now. So, again, I mean, questionable decisions being made by Rexos, and, and clearly they are, it is hurting them in terms of, you know, winning this series. Yeah. 19 and a half minutes in right here at uh, game number two. Again, uh, Millstone game and up one game to nothing. And Actually starting to get a pretty comfortable lead here in that game. Number two, Wretched Egg in the meantime at the top lane. There's a stun from Blitz. The perfect setup for a Beaver Banger initiation with the Twin Fangs on Gemini and the easy kill as a result. You even saw uh, Wrath of the Pharaoh, or uh, Tormented Soul coming out there at the last second, but he uh, even came a little bit too late. But good effort and a just-in-case tool. He is actually working towards a Hellflower here, and he's on his way to one with the way, uh, you know, Farm's just going along. And Dawn, Dawnbringer's going to be finished. I mean, we're going to have basically a 20-minute Dawnbringer on Swift Plate so fast. with Ghost yeah, Marchers. Very, very that's, that's pretty good timing. Yeah, and, and I mean, I'll see. Middle lane, Pharaoh catches Empath. Yeah. Empath's going to try to live as long as he can, get by some time, and he does it looks like. He kind of goes back in right to the last second. He does fall. Will they at least be able to get something out of this again, Pharaoh? Somewhat tanky with that so helm. Tanky, yeah. He's going to try to make the getaway. Dead. Mummy Wall's coming up in one second. Using them right there. Goes for the TP. Hoping for oh, the best. Great. No. Trample through. And down yeah, he goes. That, that was a good trade, though, by Rex. And, and clearly showing that, you know, Pharaoh probably should a little bit too greedy in that sense. Thought he could get away. But, I mean, he was ganking someone, like, so clear, so close to a tier two. Like, he has to expect a rotation to come out. But, you know, that, that little bit of a trade is definitely uh, the start to maybe a comeback here for Rex. So, yeah. uh, good kill in that sense. I mean... Uh, for, for Rex to really get back into this game, I'd love to see um, Silhouette pick up a portal key and then start going around ganking with Cthulhu from because uh, they've been trying to get involved in teamfights, but clearly they just shows that they don't have the, the, the superior teamfight just of yet. Tempest doesn't really have the, the strong head, isn't really level 11, neither is Wretched Hag. So uh, to really get back into this game, they'll need to start ganking. And, and with the portal key on Silhouette, uh, they definitely have ganking potential, obviously, with, with Cthulhu from having a portal key as well. Um, so in that sense, I think that's their the, the game plan of the next five minutes. Uh, if, it, if they can get a, a, a portal kill and silhouette in the next uh, couple of minutes, that would be the, the, probably the, the best way to get back into this game, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, yeah, as Quincy says right there, as well, silhouette coming in. Now she has the illusion of port too, and they probably are aware of that too. Is that the real one still? It is. Silence, yep. yeah. The silence comes out. She can't port when she's silenced, obviously. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, that's almost like uh, 
Right. Not, I don't want to say a downside, but it kind of is a downside of Silhouette. You almost feel a little too safe at times. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, like, he, he would have been fine, but he's going against a Parasite. And obviously, Parasite can easily take off the uh, the Null Stone with yeah. the Leech and then instantly uh, you know, follow up with a face hug. So, I mean, Silhouette has to be a little bit careful. I mean, she was closing in on that portal key. I think that was the real, the real turning point for Rexos. But now, you know, 7, 000, 700 gold, sorry, away from the portal key. Uh, and now, obviously, the, the chance for a comeback is, is looking you know, dimmer and dimmer. Uh, the longer this game goes on. Yeah. Uh, look at the bottom rune area. I see a little bit of a fight potential, perhaps. Torment and Soul coming out. Gonna see uh, what's going on over here at the Hellborn Ancients, and you know maybe spots a couple of heroes in the process. But uh, Silhouette, that's big, really big, because that death not only just dying in general sucks, obviously, but that's gonna delay that portal key even even that much more. So by the time he does get it now, you know perhaps even another item on Swiftblade who already has a Dawnbringer. And another 1,800 gold, so 470 gold per minute here. At the, only that 22 and a half minute mark that we were just talking about here on Fuzzy Sloth. So, Zillafon uh, misses the trample. Yeah, Blitz. He's able to I'm surprised. That. Yeah, I'm surprised he actually went for the uh, the obliterate as well. Like he missed the stun. Okay, that's fine. You just back off. But then he actually used the obliterate as well. So that's going to be uncalled, and it probably won't make the biggest of difference because there won't be a team fight in the next um, sort of 70 seconds. But still, could definitely you know weaken his gank potential now in the next minute or so. Yeah. Uh, you see Blitz coming to the top lane, actually. Silhouette, that is a fake one now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, like, against against Blitz, he's like, he's fine. He can easily just, you know, TP away. But it's the Parasite, and even the, the Pharaoh, perhaps, when, when he gets to the Hellflower, that like, he's going to have real issues with. Um, and they're looking like they're actually going to push here in the top top lane, the Tier 1 tower. Well, apparently a uh, DC right there on one of their players. So, yeah, obviously a pause going to be coming out for our Hellborn team. But, uh... Even with Swiftblade and his farm looking pretty damn good, he's still actually uh, not not even on par with what we're used to seeing. Apparently, as far as the end game goes, I guess. So he's getting there, but I mean that kind of just kind of tells you with how, how actually strong this hero really is. But uh, top lane, it goes down with ease. Not really much. Uh, obviously, that Rexar's going to be able to do with that. And then why not? The push will continue here, at least to the secondary tower, most likely. Yeah, they should give up the game. tier 2 as well. They should try and push as much as possible, even maybe farm the enemy jungle and then just defend at, at their base. Although they are far, you know, very far behind in terms of the golden XP, the one advantage they do have is, is the great AoE synergy with like the, the Tempest, Good for and Hagen. And with this choke point up here on, on, the, on the ledge here, the tier 3, that could be the perfect initiation tool for, for Hellborn. So uh, if, if Legion do push on, they should definitely defend, because I definitely think they, they can and, and, and win a team fight here. And Legion are going to you know, advance forward, so I expect the the rotation come out from Hellborn. Here we go, Tempest, Ports in, as well as, uh, well, basically the rest of the team here. Man, they do so much damage to it so quickly as well. Yeah. Good through the blood, gets a trample off on a couple of heroes, and Blitterate is activated. You see some good damage to follow, but not really the most. In fact, the tower goes down in favor of the leading team still, and the rest oh, wow. will just get the hell on it. Excuse me, the hell on out of there, Ooh. so. Parasite. Is Parasite caught? Oh, Parasite was hanging around. Yeah, I didn't even notice he was there. <laughs> As, uh, yeah, you know, he kind of got kind of an awkward spot, so he goes down at least. Look at that damage Something on the there. Puzzle Box menu as well. <laughs> he kills Tempest from full HP. Uh, oh, in the end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's what I mean. Like, the rotation coming out from Hellborn was just a little bit too slow. They did so much damage, it sort of surprised me, and it most likely surprised the Hellborn team as well. They dropped the tier 3, and it wasn't even denied either, so a lot of gold given. Uh, go into the Legion side in, in the in the result, but at least they do take the Parasite, so some kind of um, benefit to them, but still they're, they're quite far behind, and, and now, you know, Silhouette does have the money for a portal key. Is that the decision she's going to go with? Uh, I'm not 100% sure, <laughs> but they need to try something to try and get back into this game, because at the moment they're, they're slowly slipping, uh, and uh, you know, the series is looking very, very You know what she needs? To... A Thunderclaw. Well, no. <laughs> Hey, what well, better example than this one? We were just talking about that. They got a Thunderclaw on that Puppet Master game, and it actually worked out fairly oh, well. Oh, it's a Yeah, you see top lane. Uh, Pharaoh is going to get caught out. Tempest stunts used. Third one goes off right there. That will be the final one for the time being. Wrath of the Pharaoh, he's just duking and jive in. Hoping for the best once again. Hellfire finally going to go for the TP, but yeah, by then it was just too late, obviously. So he gets taken out. Once again, buys a lot of time. He did get four heroes to ultimately collapse on top of him before he gets picked off, and that just means more farm for the rest of his team, so that's kind of the good way to look at that here for Millstone Gaming, but at least a kill for Rexars, and something they can be happy with. He does go the Firebrand, so probably more of the typical, uh, but I'd say, I don't know though, if, I feel like if you're, if you're gonna, uh, 
I feel like the portal key just probably makes more oh, sense with the way you're out of this game. I mean, they're going to go for a kill attempt right here on the Gemini. Temis Ultimate is going to be used to guarantee it. That's good, man. That's good. That's fun. Right. They, might, yeah, they could even take Congrats with this kill unless Gemini wants to buy it back. But you saw the gold swing, and they're actually behind 10,000. And then they get that one kill, and they're back 1,500 gold. That's a lot of money, honestly, to, to swing back just from one kill. And it looks like they might even rotate to Congo here. So, yeah, I mean, Red Cars are definitely still in this game. If they can take this token as well, it could be even bigger. Yeah, they're gonna go for it. This uh, this is a possible time turning moment here for Rexars. Again, knowing that their backs are against the wall, they're down one nothing on the verge of being demoted to Gold Division with a loss here. But uh, they do not want that to be, and they're showing, putting up a good fight. Legion. So Congo is getting low. Legion are looking to actually defend this. Um, Rex is gonna back off. Even uh, the Gemini pull back as well. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's a good trade. They okay. pull back. On Gemini, I, I thought they were actually going to try and defend. Actually, but they might even lose the Congo now, actually, because of that buyback. And yeah. Temis Ultimate is down. Well, this is a. Close They're going to lose. I mean, they can't fight this. Yeah, with Temis Ultimate yeah. down, I think it's the biggest thing. It's like uh, yeah. we could try, but we'd probably just be throwing ourselves at them. So. Yeah, I mean, if they lose this team fight, they're most likely going to lose the game. So it's probably the right decision. But I mean, again, this goes back to. I mean, I think actually. Ferris oh, Pharaoh jumps. <laughs> okay, just distraction if anything. Buying more time for Swift. I don't even know if that was necessary, but now Pharaoh in the meantime, he's getting low. Congo finally goes down. Token Alive picked up by Swift Play to the background. So they get the clone of Pharaoh. Will they fall back or not, though? Parasite, he's still, sticking to, still taking some good damage. As the chase continues, that is the real silhouette in the front oh. line. Trample is the trigger grapple comes in as well. And Parasite going to be pressed out by every go. Swift Slash is jumping around. Cut through the front, goes down. Swift Play doing plenty of damage, as you would expect. Swift silhouette, she will pour down with the illusion. And she is running away with the rest of the team right here. Oh, she's dead. What am I saying? <laughs> that was the illusion still alive. I hate this hero. Anyways, the rest are going to be fine as Tempest Empath and a Wretched Hag make their escape. But Again, Rex was just showing themselves that she's a little bit too greedy, honestly. Like, they, they could have obviously just backed off from the Congo, didn't even try for it, because obviously they didn't know Gemini had the buyback. And after using the Tempest Ultimate, it just shows that they can't really win a team fight. So when Gemini did buy back, them going for Congo just gave him a free Congo for Legion. And again, they had a chance to get back off. But they, they killed the Pharaoh, but they tried to go for more. And as a result, they lost the, the Silhouette and Cofilifon, and now they lost the Tier 2 as well. And, it goes, and they're just back into the Golden Experience deficit that they were you know, three or four minutes ago when they yeah. had the, you know, the good kill onto the Gemini. I mean, one you know, benefactor is that obviously Gemini does only have one more buyback now, but still, uh, the Golden Advantage deficit is so big that will it even matter? I'm not 100% sure, Breaky. No, not sure indeed. 29 minutes in, it's uh, for them to to prove us or show us that it can't be. I mean, we can't forget about this Wretched Hag, actually. That's, that's another thing. She actually just finished the Grimoire Power, and we all know the potential of that item on a Wretched Hag. I mean, she's level 14, so getting close to that level 16 mark and uh, will amp her damage quite a bit as well as her farm potential here. So she gets that into the Shrunken Head follow-up, and before you know it, she's also going to be quite the threat herself uh, in this game. So th that is just kind of another positive on what's been a pretty gloomy game so far for Rexars. And uh, staying alive here, but I will say uh, Assassin Trout just picked up on Swift Blade. Doesn't help things either. And he still has three minutes remaining on the token of life, actually, so still got uh, plenty of time to work with that even for the time being. You see Silhouette's getting pretty aggressive right here with that set as Farm in the Jungle. She actually ports out with the illusion of the bottom lane as they're about to possibly set up a gank right here. Oh. I don't know about that timing, but will this actually happen? Probably not. Yeah, if Silhouette was still here, maybe a different story. Definitely. But yeah, like Swift Blade and, and Blitz are already in the top lane. Obviously, they didn't know that, but still. A yeah, questionable player, and, and Silhouette so doesn't actually pick up the, the portal key. And another questionable decision because I honestly think you know, portal key is such a great iron on Silhouette. You, know, you can really take benefit of the tree grapple and, and get in, in, in a good position for the death lotus. But without the portal key, she's definitely going to have mobility issues. But actually, top lane, they're oh going all man. in. Oh man, Swift Blade, he goes right on top of the port. He nearly kills Ratchet Back off the bash. He will be able to blink away in time. But here we go. A fight definitely going to be started right here. Trample it connect. Again, he has a token of life, so do not commit too much. If you're the Hellborn side, a wall comes off, not the biggest deal. So uh, Swift Flight does have Swift Slash is ready to go. If he finds a moment, here we go. Pharaoh jumps in. Never mind. Back so they should try <laughs> trying to bait something. Turn. Yeah. Oh, well, Tabas Ultimate catches Gemini. Immediately stopped him with a Hellflower. And now here's the follow for the Legion team. Tabas just melts. Swift Slash is tearing through the Hellborn side. Cthulhu is still one alive. Wretched Ag, not so much. Oh, I said he's well alive. Make that make that dead alive, I guess. Uh, or just plain dead. Cthulhu Bot goes down. He does buy back, though. Re Melee Rax is going to end up falling right here, most likely. In the back, Cthulhu Bot just trying to distract. So, okay, so Swift Blade is dead. 
But he's going to come back up because of this thing called Token of Life. Auto attacks to follow. Cthulhu Font tapping away. Going to be fine. But they got what they came for in the racks. Blitz is the only one to fall in the end. And several buybacks used right there by Rexar. So yeah, it's actually yeah. somewhat of a good hold by the buybacks. But still, they, they the lost the, the team fight and they lost the racks as well. Obviously buying uh, buying back on the, the Cthulhu and Tempest. And, and it was one of those plays where like Tempest thought he had like all, all three or all four. And he catches one and instantly stopped by the Hellflower from Pharaoh. And, and then you saw that the, the return uh, from, from the last of us instantly uh, capitalized on the mistake and as a result to pick up the, the Rex and and now Rex are trying to you know, make use of the buyback but I don't think they can be sure and they might be able to get a tier 2 perhaps but uh, it's going to be risky to say the least yeah there, it's, this, is, this is kind of more of the, the all in decision of needing to make something happen Empath yeah he's going to be fine in the end actually able to tab it away even with Pharaoh and all his power right there so makes his escape meanwhile back to that middle tower though they're going to try for something. Will this pay off? Catman Champion coming in right there. Still putting in the background. He's spinning on top of Tempest. Tempest is like, get off me, bro. Get off me, please. It's not going to happen. They could not stun him because of the uh, immunity, of course, with the spin. Swiftblade trying to help chase Silhouette, but a good point to get the last second to get away before the stun connects. So there's definitely some desperation there coming out from Rexar as if they feel like they needed to get something out of it, get a tower kill in the process, and, well, that kind of backfired too as Tempest goes down. And now they're going to be another push to be had. Most likely, or maybe, thinking about it. Not sure where they want to go with this, but uh, 28 or more 100 gold saved up on Swiftplay with that said. Again, he just continues to pull that up. Bottom line, what happened down here? Okay, Wretched Hag gets picked off. Parasite doing the work, I guess, so. Hacks down. Oh, no, she buys back. They're going to go for an initiation on a Gemini right here. Haunt applied. Will they have enough damage? Doesn't look like it. I mean, Batblast is up, but he doesn't want to use it. Oh, he's in the last second. Split up comes out, though. Here comes a turn from Gemini. Looking to go for it at least. Down goes Wretched Act. Gemini goes back into full form. Double tap. Fuzzy Sloth in the process on Swiftplay. He's doing the majority of the damage. He gets a hat trick. Will he get more out of it? Most likely. As Silhouette points over the ledge, but the chase continues. The auto attack gets the kill on Quad Kill. And a champion of New Earth is Fuzzy Sloth. And probably the game winning fight there for our Nullstone yeah. gaming team. And, and, and now it's going to most likely take the Rex in the middle lane and it's looking so, so bad for Rex. As I, I don't think they've got anything left in the tank. Uh, but we'll have to see. It doesn't look like they're conceding just yet though. Maybe they're going to try for one more team fight. But, I mean, losing two Rex off the bat and being 20,000 gold behind. Yeah. And there's the GG break here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's also one of those tough places. Again, you know, like I said, a loss here. I mean, it's not all over by any means, but you will be demoted out of the gold division, so unfortunate for them. Rexar is going to have to go gold for cycle three. But uh, congratulations with that set. The positive side of things, definitely. No Stone Gaming. They're going to stay alive here in Diamond and uh, also move along, obviously, when it comes to the bracket. So a big victory for them, and they take the series two games to nothing. Uh, in the end, so definitely again a very somewhat of a passive game there early on. It did pick up as it progressed, as you would expect. But uh, I mean, as far as Rexar is just concerned, I don't know. I, I, I maybe just not not taking the the most uh, efficient choices as far as when to pick fights yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, for, for, for Rexers, I think they played very, very well. Like individually skilled, I think they're they're fantastic. Obviously, being pretty renowned for like your very, very high tier men players, and and clearly it shows that they're very strong in the laning phase, very strong you know in, in 